What is going on, everyone? It's the Print House, and I'm getting you that buttery smooth first layer that you always wanted. But first, please, guys, give me a like, a subscribe, ring the bell, and put some comments below because every single one of you guys, you are growing me faster than I thought I was going to grow. This, I mean, it's fantastic. Um, the more people that see these videos, the more people I can make content for. It's just exciting. Um, so I'm not even going to waste any time. We're going to jump right over to the printer. So let's go. So immediately we're going to be working on an Ender 3. You can do this on any printer that you have, your CR Touch or anything uh, connected to. So the very first thing I want you guys to do is do a bed level. Now I have already done this, so it's unnecessary for me. Um, now after you've got your bed level, go ahead and uh, go to prepare and do an auto home. Oops. Do an auto home. And Auto Home is going to do some funny things. It's going to move the uh, probe a couple times. And it's uh, once it gets there uh, and stops moving, then we've reached the point where we're going to be using a standard sheet of paper as if you were doing a manual bed level. So, uh, so it's done moving. So we're going to go back over here. We're going to go to Move. We're gonna move our Z down to zero. And once it's at zero, you're going to see that it's still not touching the bed. We need to do a Z offset. So we're gonna go back and your Z offset. Uh, I know my Z offset is negative 1.25, but uh, you guys should start at 0.1, I believe is uh, my recommendation. And you're going to put a piece of paper under the nozzle as if you were doing a manual level and move the paper. If the paper has a little bit of resistance, uh, that is the that, that's the point at which you want to get to. So if it still has no resistance, go down another point one, right? So now I'm at point two, and then move the paper. And you're going to do this until you reach. A level of resistance that you would uh, uh, that you would uh, feel is uh, level for a manual level. Now, like I said, I know mine is negative uh, 1.28, so I am going to bring mine uh, down to let's see, uh, 1.2, and uh, in this case. Uh, I'm feeling a little bit. I'm feeling quite a bit of resistance, uh, and I can't put this back under. So uh, I would usually stop here, and then I would go back about 0.2. So I'll go to one. And once you do this, you're going to go to the next step. So the next step is, and I'm going to be working with this printer because it's preheated. You want to level your bed preheated. So print, I'm gonna, uh, I have this test print. The file's gonna be in the description below. If you don't want to use my file, you can create your own and you're gonna see exactly what it is here in a minute. So the, the key is once your nozzle, or sorry, once your nozzle is giving you resistance on your paper, the key is to go back point two. You do not want to drag your nozzle on the bed. If you do that, you're gonna possibly damage your bed, possibly damage your nozzle. That's a bad day all around. If you damage both, it's a terrible day. So the key is to go back point two. Now what we're looking for here is when you go back that much, as the nozzle is moving along the bed, the layer is gonna look really, really bad because the nozzle is too high off of the print bed. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into the tune setting and we're going to be tuning the Z offset live as the printer is printing. And we're going to be able to manually see what's happening, like I said, live as it's printing. Now, you guys are not going to have a very good uh, camera picture of exactly what's happening because the focus is way too difficult as the print head is moving to get a close-up shot. But guys... I promise, once when it's done, I am going to pull the piece off and I'm going to allow you guys to look at it and see 
what was happening as I was moving it. So on my tune, this printer conveniently is also negative 1.28. So what you have to do first is just, you're gonna have to get, a, you know, use your head, let it get a few layers, and then put your head in some funny angles so you can see around the print head. Now, you guys are going to have, like I said, a very difficult time seeing this, but I can see right now that those layers look terrible. Okay, or sorry, not layers. Those, uh, those individual strips that are being laid down look terrible. They're not connecting to each other at all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Tune. I'm going to take my Z offset. And you guys should probably step this 0 0.05 until it starts to look good. Then step it 0 0.01. I know what my offset is, so I'm going to step it a whole point one, and then you're going to let it print for a couple a couple passes back and forth, and examine what it did. And so I can see that it still does not look very good. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back over here, and you're going to step it another point five or another point one or whatever step you're doing. The smaller the step, probably the safer it is. I know what mine is, so I can make a little bit bigger steps. Again, I recommend you guys do 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, do small steps. So at negative 1.7 or 1.17, uh, I'm noticing that these layers are becoming a little bit better, but they're still not that great. So I'm gonna come back here, do your Z offset again get a little bit more and then just let it do a couple passes this can be a really slow process you don't have to take you know it, it, it doesn't have to be fast now doing that I can immediately notice good change so you don't want to go too far guys you do not want to drag your bed so uh, this looks really good I know once again I know I'm being repetitive I know what mine is so I'm gonna go a little bit lower but you guys really don't want to drag the bed. So in this case, I would say start going in increments of 0.1. Uh, but again, I'm going to drop it all the way down to 0.28, 1.28. And then you guys can actually see on camera now that we're getting a large enough picture. You can see the vast, very, uh, you know, it's, it's a wide array. It almost looks like a rainbow with one individual color. It's the same color. You can see as the strips of plastic being laid are connecting and touching, uh, touching even better. It's very clear. Um, and I'm going to let this go for just a few more passes. This way when it stops, I can uh, give you guys a really good picture of what mine looks like and what yours should look like as well. So just one more pass on this and I'm going to go ahead and I'm gonna stop this and once it stops I'm gonna safely stops I'm going to turn my printer off this way I can drag the print bed uh, closer so guys this is what I'm talking about you can see in the bottom right how bad it was just slowly lower it give yourself a little more squish basically and I mean you can see from right to left when I lowered the Z offset even or when I raised it, I guess. I mean, technically it's lowered, but you get the idea. You can you can clearly see that um, right here was when it started to look decent, but it looks even better in this strip. Um, and obviously, if you pull this off of the print bed, you're going to see some very drastic change. Now, guys, if you wanted to stop watching here, that's great. I'm going to give you guys a little bit of insight on how to make these STL files for yourself. So over here, um, we're going to start in Cura. So if you download the STL file that I've had in the description below, uh, you're going to, uh, you're going to not have, sorry guys. I don't know why my button board wasn't working. So we're here in Cura and you're going to have, oh goodness, 
was not prepared for this. So load the file into Cura. And the very first thing we want to do is search for wall. And we want to take your wall line count down to zero. And then down here, extra skin wall count, make that zero as well. Then we're going to go back to our basic settings. We're going to make our infill density 100. And then we are going to uh, slice this with your normal settings. What this is going to do is, let me go down here. This is going to remove every wall. It's going to remove all the unnecessary stuff so we can jump right into the printing. Uh, uh, sorry, one last thing, guys. You're going to come down here to build plate adhesion and select none because we don't want to waste our time or plastic printing a brim or printing a skirt. Uh, and then, so let me go ahead and pause this. So as it starts in this bottom right corner, it's going to look really bad because your Z offset is not close enough to the bed. So as you start to get a good picture of what the print looks like, you're going to lower your Z offset a few points. Like I said, 0 0.01, 0 0.02, and then just wait and see what happens. And then you're going to lower it again, 0 0.01 or 0 0.02 in case it's not close enough. And then this is really going to refine your Z offset and make it as good as you possibly can. Now you can then, once you have your Z offset looking as good as you want, you can let this print run and go fully. And if you do that, you should have an absolutely perfect cube. Uh, and if you uh, print the file, the STL file I have below, you should have a three inch by three inch cube. So it shouldn't take too long or too much plastic. I think uh, down here you can see it's about 69 grams in three and a half hours. You don't have to print the whole thing. Uh, just in, in case you want to see uh, what your layer adhesion looks like, what your top layer looks like. Uh, now, so if you guys are deciding you don't want to work with the STL file that I have supplied, here I've got FreeCAD up, and I'm going to show you guys how I made this file in FreeCAD. So I'm going to go ahead and delete my pad. So you're going to make a uh, part, to, go to the part design workbench. And then you're going to, uh, right here, create a new sketch. And I chose the XY plane. And uh, in this case, uh, I've already got a sketch on here. So let me open this new sketch. So I just deleted the old one. And we're just going to create a rectangle. It does not matter where this rectangle is. Uh, over here, we're going to click the length constraint and make it 72 millimeters by 72 millimeters. This is roughly three inches by three inches. It's the same cube that I made. Make it whatever size you want. Uh, so come over here to the top left, click close, and then click on your sketch. And then up here uh, on this toolbar, you've got pad a selected sketch. So you're gonna pad this, pad it to whatever size you want. Once again, uh, click body, click file, and export this file, and make sure you change it to a .stl. Once you do that, I've already got this saved, so I don't need to. Once you do that, you can then uh, come back over here to Cura, and you can import your file into Cura, and you can do all the settings that I've listed above or <laughs> previously. Um, anyway, guys, I hope this was fast. I hope this helped you out. Uh, please, once again, give me a like and a subscribe. Ring the bell. Tell all your friends. The more people here, the more I can do, the more I can show you guys. I love it all. I love you guys. I'll see you in the next one.